At some point in your iOS journey, you'll work with APIs or external data sets. Most of these rely on JSON objects to store and transfer data. Understanding how to model these objects in your SwiftUI projects is critical. By doing this correctly, you'll be able to use and display the data in your apps. This video marks the official start of Section 2 in our SwiftUI Beginner course. The main goal of this section is to fetch and display live data from the Movie Database API. We'll complete the first step in this video, modeling the JSON objects in our project. If you're just joining us, feel free to grab the Section 1 code from our GitHub. The link will be in the comments. I do recommend having some experience with SwiftUI before starting this section. Section 1 of this free course is a great place to start. Let's take a look at our API data. This set is for training movies. The data contains an object, as shown by the top left curly brace. This object has an end called page and an array name results. The results array contains the data that we're interested in. From here, we can pick and choose what is needed for our app. For Blossom Movie, we need ID, title, overview, and poster path. Just a heads up, I tried original title at first, but got titles in their original language. Spanish and Japanese included. Now that we know what data is needed, it's possible to build a model. I'll navigate back to Xcode, Command N to create a new file, Swift file, next, title, create, make some space after import foundation, struct, title with braces. Struct is short for structure in Swift UI. It's a lightweight and efficient way to group related data together. Type var id colon int, enter, var title colon string, enter, var overview colon string, enter, and var poster path colon string. We model title based on what we need from the results array. Before moving on, Please make sure your spelling matches with mine. Misspelling is one of the most common mistakes when working with APIs. I want to show you one more thing with our data. This next set contains trying TV. Notice title has been replaced with name. ID, overview, and poster path are still here, but it's important to see the slight difference. Keeping this in mind, I'll go back to Xcode, hit enter after title, var, name, colon string. This will allow our title struct to also work with the TV data. However, what happens if our app tries to find a title string for TV data? As we saw, title is replaced with name in that set. The app will unfortunately crash because it's expecting a value for title. To fix this, we can mark name and title as optionals by putting a question mark at the end. This tells our struct that title and name may or may not have a value. If they don't have a value, instead of crashing, the app will assign nil to them. Nil means no value in Swift. Because this isn't data that we manage, it's a good idea to mark all the properties as optionals. Just in case. The properties we need from the results array are modeled well here. Just a few more things. After title, Type colon, decodable, comma, identifiable. This makes the struct conform to the decodable and identifiable protocols. Decodable allows title to be created from an external data source. Swift will automatically map the data to the struct's properties if the names match. Identifiable requires this struct to have an ID property that uniquely identifies each instance. This will be useful when we use title in our Swift UI views. Our title struct is complete. In the API data, title was under an array called results. We need to do the same thing with our title model. Make some space before struct. Struct API object colon decodable with braces bar results colon bracket title bracket 
equals brackets. Instead of listing results as an optional, we set it as an empty array. That way, if the database returns nil, there's already an empty array there. I'll bring up the working data one more time and put it side by side with our model. Everything is matching up. We start with an array called results. This array contains a struct title, which has the properties we need. Good work on this one. This is a really important concept. It goes beyond iOS if you ever want to get into any other coding space. Great job again. I can't wait to see you in the next one.